Oh, I know they were. Oh, in here. Oh, in here. You're not going to disrespect the women in here, my friend. You know what I'm saying? Kick them out. <laughs> what I'm getting at, what I'm getting at, when I'm talking about awareness, since most of you in this room said that you're leaders and not followers, is that it's become very clear to me, you know, when uh, I asked Mr. McGowan and Mr. Coleman to give me an idea of what I was walking into when I came to Amity, was coming to Amityville, and when I go around the country, be in Brooklyn or anywhere else, is that a lot of us who say we're leaders are actually not leaders at all. You know, a lot more of us than we realize are followers. We don't realize how we're dictated to in terms of what we wear. You know, if someone wears it in the video, a lot of us go out and get it. You know, if someone puts a certain kind of sneaker out there, a lot of us go out there and say, well, I'll put my money down for that thing. I'm glad the people in this room are saying that, but the important thing is to think about, as you all stay here for the next 36 hours, ask yourselves, how can you influence your peers who actually are followers so you can say that there's something else to look at beyond what you see on TV every single day. You know what I'm saying? That's real important. That's real important. You know, because what I'm seeing around the country as I travel is that a lot of us, especially in the, in the black and Latino communities, feel that we're nothing more than N-I-G-G-A's and B-I-T-C-H's because we hear it over and over again on TV, in the radios. You know, there's no creativity, as she said, no originality. And y'all are so much more than that. You all do realize that, right? Yep. Yes. You all do realize that, right? Yep. Yeah. You know? <laughs> When we talk about awareness, what does that mean to y'all just by showing it? My man in the, in the hat, what does awareness mean to you? You. You, my man. Oh my God. What do you think awareness means? Awareness. Awareness, is knowledge. awareness is knowing yourself and not allowing anyone to dictate and tell you what you're allowed to know, what you know at this moment, and what you can know in the future. Mm -hmm. Everyone hear that? Yeah. No, that's right, Jasmine, that's right. Let her come up to the mic, Dean, right there. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Because you owe them the money. Having awareness is knowing yourself and not allowing anyone to dictate to you what you can know, what you know now, and what you will know. Woo! my grandfather got lunch down south. And after that, I don't even know my history of my family. 
And some of y'all know what I'm talking about. If your family came from the South or the Caribbean or Latin America, y'all really know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? And so awareness means that I have a responsibility and an obligation to make myself into the best possible human being. You know, because I'm not just living for myself. I'm living for all the people who will never have this kind of opportunity. You know? And as a black man, I'm going to say this to the brothers here for a second specifically. You don't understand until you go to jail that there are more of us in jail now than on college campuses. This is serious. You know? It's serious. And Mr. Collins was, Mr. Collins was talking about the struggles that he's had trying to get people to pay attention. Get people to pay attention to the fact that someone cares about you, that you got to see the world beyond today. Y'all got to think about it. This is serious. Very, very serious. And I don't know if any of y'all have been locked up or even arrested. I'm here to tell you, as someone who managed to avoid getting sent to jail, but I got arrested many times. I don't even know how I managed to get out of that stuff. I even got arrested when I was in college. Because I went right back home and got into some of the same stuff I had been doing before I went to college. I don't even think Mr. Cohen even knows that. But I'm saying, this is important, son. This is important because, you know, when, you, when I was watching the Source Awards last week, I was real sad. Because it was on national TV. It's being beamed all over the world. And I know that I come from a community that created Malcolm X, Dr. King, mm. Harry Tubman, Sojourner Truth, Tupac Shakur, Power. who read books. Mm. You know what I'm saying? People can always focus on this. They say, well, he's a thug. He's like, no, nah, Tupac was a reader of books. He was educated. He couldn't have even, he wouldn't even know who Machiavelli was if he didn't read a book by Machiavelli called The Prince. Real basic stuff. You know? We got to think about that. And I think what happens sometimes is that, you know, we all so cool. It's like in this era, it's, it's like everyone wants to be cool, everyone wants to be hard. No one wants to be themselves because they're not aware of themselves, Mr. McGowan. You know? They're not even aware of themselves. We thank you, leaders, for a lot of us are following us. You know, I can go to downtown Brooklyn, I can take you to downtown Brooklyn any day of the week or to 125th Street in Harlem. You know what I'm saying? And you see everybody dressing alike, walking alike, and don't even realize that we're being programmed to do that stuff. Or think about it, the fact that you go to any hood in America, the same stuff is sold in the hood. You can't find nowhere else, but it's always sold in the hood. We all wear tri triple fat goose coats every winter. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. You know what I'm saying? No one even questions it. Why is everybody all of a sudden wearing platinum chains? Does anyone even care that a lot of this platinum is coming from places in Africa where people are working for sub minimum wages, losing body parts in some places like Sierra Leone, dying so we can wear it in a video in America that happens to even own the stuff? Does anyone even care when you watch MTV Cribs or BT's How I'm Living, when you look at the people's houses, half the time it ain't even their houses? Oh. Lil yeah. John, that's his mama's house. Oh. <laughs> and how do you know that? I don't want to do that. How do you become aware of this thing? You read, you ask questions. And have you ever thought about the fact, go back, go take it, the next time you watch BT's How I'm Living or MTV's Cribs, ask yourself, how many of these athletes and rappers have bookcases in their houses? No. 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 <laughs> Every now and then, my friend. Every now and then. It's always an emphasis on the material stuff. Now I'm going to tell you, as someone who came from mad poverty, I was like everybody else. I want, you, want, you don't want to be poor. You want to have nice stuff. You know? And a lot of times for us, we feel good about ourselves. Your hair is all done up. You got some jewelry. You got some ice. You got the latest sneakers, the latest shoes, the latest bag. This, that's cool. You know? And you get a little older, you get a car, you get an SUV, you get your rims on it, the whole nine yards. But you know what? That is not who you are. That's what you own. And if we didn't learn anything else from September 11, when those two buildings fell down, think about it, the World Trade Center, that's the financial capital of the world down there. That represents money and material things. But it didn't matter if you were white or black, poor or rich, male or female, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, it didn't matter who you were, if you were in those two buildings. It didn't matter what you had, all you had was yourself. And 3,000 people are gone. You know what I'm saying? And so I think the question we've got to ask ourselves, is my awareness based on what I own, or is it what I bring to the table intellectually, spiritually? What kind of human being am I? You know? 
What kind of human being am I? What are you going to do with your life, basically? You know, as Mr. Cohen was saying, you know, in my lifetime, like I said, I'm in my mid-30s. I went to college. I've had lots of money. I've had no money. I've been on MTV. I've been on BT. I've been, I'm on TV a lot. What? You know? I hear you. I've seen you on TV, too. I've met all kinds of famous <laughs> I've met all kinds of famous people, like Tupac Shakur, like Colin Powell, like Tommy Hilfiger, this person, that person. All that stuff is cool, but it doesn't tell me who I am. It says what I do. I've been a journalist, so I've interviewed people. What's important is what kind of human being am I trying to be? You know? And what do you do with the life that you have? You know? What do you do with the life you have? I mean, I could have said, you know, man, we ain't got no money. My mother probably raised me on five or six thousand dollars a year. We were mad, mad, mad poor. I remember her going to the corner store every week and asking the cat to cut the bologna, a thousand of the bologna thicker because it would last a couple extra days, you know? But when I, one thing I think about my mom's with her limited education, with her poverty, being a black woman who's poor in America, she had a vision for herself and for me. And so the question for you all in this room, what's your vision? What is your vision for yourself? What do you want to do with your life? Where do you see yourself a year from now? Where do you see yourself at the end of this weekend? Where do you see yourself five years from now? Where do you see yourself ten years from now? Have you even thought that far? <coughs> you know? People always talk about, you know, Tupac because the movie's out and the album, the Resurrection album is out. I don't know how many of y'all saw the movie, but the thing that's striking to me, Tupac only lived 25 years. But he did more than people three times his, life, his age did with their lives. Because he had a vision for himself. Yeah, he made a lot of mistakes. He was human. He did some stuff that was mad foul. Yeah, he did. And I love the brother. I knew him. But by the same token, he was always working to do something with his life. You know? I mean, when, I, when I interviewed Tupac for the first time about 10 years ago, the one thing he said to me is like, man, all I wanted to do was see my name, hear my voice on a record on the radio, and see myself in a movie. And I already did that. Juice and my first album. After that, it was like gravy to him. The only thing I would say, if I could talk to Tupac now, because he ain't here no more, and I say this to myself, no, he's not. <laughs> he ain't here no more. <laughs> is this. We gotta stop making peace with, like, you know, death, basically. We gotta stop making peace with death. What I'm seeing happen in this era is a lot of people think it's all right that you ain't gonna live a long time. You know? I remember when I was young, I was like, man, I made it 20 years old, I'm happy, I'm good. Then I made it 25, <laughs> then I made it 30, then I made it 35, and I said, you know what? Because I wanna be aware, Mr. McGowan, I'm not gonna say that anymore because that's living your life negatively. Well, I ain't gonna make it anyway, so. <laughs> now nah, we can't roll like that. You gotta look at it like you're gonna be here for a hundred years and plan it out that way. You know? Plan it out that way. And the only way you're gonna do that is to, you know, take advantage of the opportunities you have when someone like Mr. McGowan or Mr. Cohen say, Hey, we're going to do this program, we're going to have guest speakers, we're going to have a chance to talk with each other, exchange ideas with each other, and ask questions. And think, sisters and brothers, think. Think. Think outside the box. Think. You know? Very, very important. The last thing I want to say, because I want to get into this uh, dialogue with you all, and I want to encourage this. How many of y'all... Uh, have been outside of New York State. Good, that's great. Outside the East Coast. Outside of the country. How many people were born outside of the country? How many people speak a second or third language? Very important. Speak a rock and foil. <laughs> Diablo. That's what's up. Well, listen for a second. Did you notice that the hands got fewer as I asked more questions? Now, I noticed the people who said they speak uh, more than one language. 
Are uh, most of the people who said that are you is your background Latino? Yeah, I think. No, no, no. What are the other like, what are the other backgrounds? What other I'm Irish. <laughs> Irish? I'm Spanish. I'm German. Hispanic. You speak German? German. The reason why it's important, if we're talking about awareness, sisters and brothers, you got to know who you are. I don't care if you're African American, West Indian, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Colombian, Vietnamese, Chinese, Filipino, Filipino Jewish, Italian, Irish, whatever you are, the first thing is you need to know your own family history. Very, very important. Very important. You know, ask yourself, well, what do I know about being Irish? What do I know about being Jewish? What do I know about being Italian? And don't, what do I know about being black? And don't give me the stereotypes that we often see about those particular groups. Give me the history. You know, before hip hop, before the soprano, before any of that stuff, whatever your particular group is. <laughs> what is it about my particular people that I do, that I need to know? That's number one. Number two, I mean, the basic way of doing that, ask your mother, father, your grandparents, if you still have grandparents alive, where did you come from, how did we get here? Like when I met Mr. Powell, where is he at? You know, we had the same last name, so the first thing I said, well, where are you from? Because my family's African American, from the South. Same thing, and so I started talking a little bit about my family history, because I was interested in, like, we might actually be related. I don't know. And the only way that you can be aware of yourself is to also do some reading, some reading some reading. You know, there are enough books out there to understand African American history, Italian American history, Irish American history. One of the best books I've read this year, I think Mr. Cohen recommended it to me because he knows I'm very uh, fond of the history of the Kennedy family, is about John Kennedy, but it's really a history about Irish Americans in, uh, in Boston from the 1880s up to the present. You know? Real important. Real important. If your family is from somewhere like Haiti and you don't speak Creole, you need to learn. You know? You should learn. If you happen to be Latino, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Colombian, Ecuadorian, El Salvadorian, Salvador Espanol, por favor, por favor. And as you become aware of who you are, as you become aware of who you are, it's also important to begin to learn to appreciate other people. Now, I grew up in Jersey City uh, in the 1970s and 80s, and so I went to mixed schools, integrated schools. So it was fascinating to me. A lot of my close friends were Puerto Rican, for example. And so I made it a point to have a working understanding of Spanish. I need to know what people meant when they say, Boricua, real basic. You know? I remember going to one of my friend's houses, who was, his name was Anthony Confort Conforti. He was Italian. I had a friend who was from uh, 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 Peru named Merco Delgado. And so I would ask questions about their particular family backgrounds. This is so important. Because a part of the awareness is not just learning about yourself, but learning about other people so we can begin to stop to have these kind of divisions that we always see going from one generation to another. I don't like you because you're black. I don't like you because you're West Indian. I don't like you because you're Latino. I don't like you because you're Asian. I don't like you because of this, because of that, etc. This is why we see so much ignorance out here today. I mean, I know some of y'all saw what happened with Eminem this week. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he was a uh, folks of the source. The folks of the source put out a tape about Eminem from about 10 years ago where he said some derogatory stuff about black women. Now, one, he was mad enough to apologize for it. Number two, yeah, the people of the source got a grudge against him no matter what. Number three, number three. Number, exactly. Number yeah. three, she said Benzino's wife, definitely. Number three, <laughs> number three, if we're going to condemn Eminem for this in black women, we also need to condemn some of the black rappers for this yeah. in black women. Yeah. 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 Or condemning women, period. Because part of the awareness, brothers, men in the room, no matter what your background is racially, is also we got to learn how to respect women. Because when you listen to the music today, it sounds like a lot of us hate women. Hate women. Hate women. Hate women. You know? And so part of being aware, this is important. If you actually use the word N-I-G-G-A or B-I-T-C-H all the time, like it's somebody's first name, you are really unaware and really a self-hating individual as far as I'm concerned. I don't care who you are. 
Hey, nothing cool about that. Nothing cool about that. And what I always say to people, if you're really aware, even if someone acts a certain way, you know, you're supposed to be a leader, supposed to be intelligent, you're supposed to be aware. You don't go down to where they're at intellectually and just say the stuff to them. You know, like I heard someone say earlier, well, some people are strippers. Even if someone is doing that, you still treat them like they're a queen. Still treat them like they're a queen, because you know better. You know? You're supposed to know better. And so I'm going to end it there and encourage you all to read books. If you want some suggestions for some books, encourage you all to continue to travel. You know, if you are in a Spanish class or any other kind of language class, take it seriously. Don't take it just to pass. You know? Take it seriously. At least learn Spanish because we know the Latino community in the next 50 years is going to be the dominant community in this country. Yeah. At least learn that language. Oh, snap. You know? And take your education.